Hello, how are you? You look you look uh, like I, you're in a, in a in a box somewhere. I kind of feel like I am. This is our rehearsal space box. This is it's our rehearsal jail. space. What what are you this rehearsing at the, the moment? Creativity happens. What are you what are you rehearsing at the moment? Uh, we're just uh, we're on the TV show, uh, a new TV show called uh, Kung Fu. It's a CW production, and this right. is our yeah. studio here. So, uh, is this your regular studio, or is this something that um, uh, was just set up for the for the show? Well, this is set up specifically for the show. I mean, due to the the pandemic these days, <laughs> you know, we have to be fairly um, isolated. Uh, we are, you know, the the critical red zone where we are dealing with cast, right? So we are you know, specifically in our own zone. Uh, so we, we have to be separate to, to, to where the shooting studio is, right? So that's just the reality these days, I guess. Have you, cha- have, have you, have you found that, obviously it's made it more difficult, of course, but um, how difficult is it on set or how different is it on set now compared to what it was before? You, you know, it's, um, it's just very, uh, very masky, if you will. Everyone's wearing masks. Um, you know, you have to keep your hands clean all the time, six feet distance between uh, all crew members at, at, at all times as much as possible. Um, you know, you once in a while you'll find, you know, some background extras have their masks on in the shot and you go, oh no, we got to do the shot again because some people forgot to the <laughs> the forget. Off. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you all these little things that we never even took for granted before, you know, like, you know, it's it, I kind of, uh, uh, it, you do something forever it's, it's one of the thing one of the safety things i i learned uh, with guns was you never pull a gun uh you know when you actually or point a gun towards anybody and click it in rehearsals because all of us all of a sudden somebody loads it and you click it you know yeah. it, it'll go off it's the silly little things that you forget you know when you get on a set that um you know kind of norm really i suppose now well, and, and being, being a, if you're active with firearms, you know, you never want to shoot, point it at anybody anyways, you know, it, it, unless you wanted to just, you know, shoot them. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, you know, I, I, I remember, um, I mean, every country has its different regulations. Um, I, funny enough, I was up, I was doing a show you were on actually um, early, well, about a year and a, just over a year ago, which was Arrow. Um, mm, oh, yeah. You know, so I was over on Arrow uh, uh, shooting up in, um, well, in Vancouver. And uh, and I was watching how you know the the stunt teams etc work there and and I'm looking at the the protocol and I was working with um what's his name Ernie Hudson and mm-hmm. Ernie said to me he said yeah I was here in Vancouver in the 1970s and there was no production there was no crew there was no anything you know it was like oh, in the 80s he said. By the 90s, all of a sudden, that all changed. You know, now it's yeah. become, yeah. and now so it's become a whole different way of working. And then, you know, and even ever since, we've come a long way. Safety is is just paramount yeah. uh, everywhere and in every department, right? Um, I'm sure you've worked around the world, uh, and I've I've traveled to to a lot of different places, Eastern Europe, Hong Kong. You know, uh, I haven't worked in the states, but but you know, safety is probably one of the best here up in yeah. Vancouver. We, we, had, we, we, we had a film one time. Uh, I was in Russia but shooting a film and uh, it was a lot of guns involved and they, we had the meeting of, you know, all the stunts, et cetera. It was a big, a big scene in a big warehouse, et cetera. And all the guns were on the table. And one of the stunt guys picked up one of the guns and all of a sudden it went, Brrr! they'd loaded them. <laughs> and the gun went off. We're just chatting around and this thing goes off. I mean, the director went absolutely apeshit. Um, you know, that because doesn't that doesn't apply anymore. No, you can't. <laughs> you would I mean, never it's... load a, a firearm before the actual uh, cameras roll. Yeah, no, but it's, no, but it, things have changed so much. I mean, <laughs> so tell me, you've done you've done a huge amount of work. I mean, you've done Star Trek Beyond, Godzilla, Deadpool. Um, you've worked on, uh, as I said, Arrow before that. You did Altered Carbon. So you've done a lot of different things. How did you start as a stunt performer? Um, it was it was all through martial arts. I owe everything everything uh, to to my love of, uh, and study of martial arts. Um, I, I started when I was eleven years old um, mm-hmm. with uh, with Chinese kung fu wushu, uh, the performance competitive type. So it was highly competitive until my I would say my early twenties. Um, and a couple of years before I a retired competition, I met up with. Um, uh, an instructor by the name of Bruce Fontaine. He used to um, work in Hong Kong on all the Jackie Chan films. 
Uh, he used to be, you know, the, the, the bad guy, the bad uh, Caucasian villain. Uh, he worked on Operation Condor. He was he was the, the one of the main one of two guys that fought Jackie Chan. Anyways, he was also a competitive wushu um, uh, athlete. And when he moved out back to Vancouver, he started coaching wushu. And that's when I met up with him. And through training under, under uh, in his school, I met a lot of stunt people, a lot of actors. You know, back in the, those days, that's that's when uh, Chet Lee would come over to to Vancouver or, or just to to Hollywood to. Um, to shoot films so that Romeo Must Die, you know, Jackie Chan came for, for a few films. So everyone's like, what is, what is this Chinese martial arts thing? What, what's this, this wushu? Yeah, I know, yeah. So everyone wanted to, to get a taste of it, right? So I, I got to meet a lot of people there. And once I, uh, once I saw what these people were doing for, for a living, I'm like, oh, I want in. <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I, was, I was still going to university at the time. Um, so, you know, I had, a, I had a couple of mentors that said, you know, said to me, Andrew, you're, you're, you're 18, 19 years old, finished university. And then if you still want in, you know, you can, you can work towards getting to, to yeah, where wise, you're wise, wise choice that wise comment, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I went to university as I became a teacher. I was a shop teacher. I, I don't, I don't use it for anything. I could have been three or four Of course you ahead. do. Of course you do. Of course you do. You're a choreographer, right? So you've got to teach people how to do stuff. So, you know, it's funny because I always think everybody says that, you know, they're like, okay, well, I did this education and I'm doing this now. It doesn't really matter. I worked in a bank when I was a kid, when I was 18 years old, I worked in a bank. Who would have thought I'm, I'm an actor? What good is that for me? Well, to be totally honest, all the finances now that I understand for the external part of it actually helped me. So I think mm -hmm. we, we do gain a lot of things that we don't take into account. It's now become ingrained in who we are. You know, so I, I, I you know, I, I think the university probably did help you more than you think. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, I was never a, a natural born teacher, but once I, once I started learning, you know, how, how to, you know, create lesson plans, you know, uh, learning objectives, that kind of thing. Um, I actually do enjoy teaching. I, I enjoy coaching actors and, and, and I used to teach martial arts quite a bit and I never, I never liked it. I, I, I always liked being a student. I liked learning I, instead of, you know, I, but you, you, as, as you would know, you can learn so much uh, via teaching. Yeah. You, gosh. you know how to dissect the techniques and, and the methodology where it comes from all that. Well, it's not, not only that, as you watch other people do things, you see things you didn't expect. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm sure you've worked with different actors and you've put a choreography together and they do something that is not how you would move or the, the move was set, but that's kind of how they've kind of put it in their brain or figured it out. And you go, oh, okay, all right, let me adjust it that way because you know, I didn't expect that to happen. And mm -hmm. I think I've, I've found that a lot through doing, you know, teaching stories over these years and, and the events that we do is that people do things that you wouldn't necessarily think was the movement. Sure, sure. And they also learn differently too. Uh, and, and you learn, you, you meet so many different personalities, uh, you know, in this, in this, in this film world, you have to be able to adapt mm -hmm. to how people take in information, how they process it, how they move, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, um, a lot of adapt, ad adapting to, to how people uh, you it's, know, it, learn. It's, it's funny. I have a, a statement that I, I tell people, um, you know, about, because I have different people coming to the sword experience. I have martial artists. I have people that have never picked up a sword before, never done any workout, all these things. And I said, well, you know, to be totally honest, you've come in with a certain set of rules and regulations that you've already got, but you have to be able to adapt. I said, because there's a one statement of fact, which um, somebody told me a, a while back, or I, I learned a while back, a couple of years ago, which was for a species to survive has nothing to do with their intelligence or their strength. It has to do with their ability to adapt. And that applies to absolutely everything. And so and sometimes to adapt, you have to unlearn a lot of things. You, yeah. know, you take an expert black belt level, you know, karate practitioner and you want them to, to, to learn Tai Chi. It is very difficult. difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. Different and, and difficult to go from hard to soft to, to, to high to low. Um, but yeah, lear unlearning a lot of techniques for sure. Um, very difficult. Being no, able to adapt. I, I, I did a, a film in... Um, again, another one in Russia about two years ago, three years ago, and they had a bodybuilder I was fighting. And the movement was just, it just could, he couldn't take a punch because there was no reaction really. Or his, his arms were too stiff because he, he couldn't adapt, his body couldn't adapt. And the funny thing was, I heard, because I wasn't on the film for very, very long, I was there for 10 days, that he broke his arm afterwards, probably because he was, you know, he'd done a stunt or did, did something that he fell over and he broke his arm. <laughs> but he's a big boy, he was a huge boy. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, so if you can adapt, if you're not, if you're rigid like that, those are the types of people that are not going to do well. 
to him his last words, I would never do it that way. <laughs> oh gosh, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. I, you know, in my style, I wouldn't do that. I said, well, to be totally honest, okay, you want to throw a kick. Now you're, you're, you're stuck in a bar with, with, with his, with his, there's walls on either side. How can you throw a kick from here? You have to adapt that situation to do something. You have to be able to, to learn from different things. And now we're in a workplace. It's, you know, you're, you're paid to, to, to move in a certain way that, you know, someone who's got a, got a different vision than what you have, you know, you're, you, you have to deliver, right? And if you can't deliver, then, then what good are you? They, they were going right. to move on to the next person, you know? But that's, you know, that's a lot of things I've learned in, in this business, you know, just learning to adapt. <laughs> Now you started, your first movie, was it Scary Movie 4? That was actually my very first uh, um, in, in, in film, in, in television and film. That was the first one. Um, I, I actually started my career doing motion capture for, for video games. Oh, did We've you? We've got a, 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 a fairly uh, sizable company up here in Electronic Arts. They do, they do quite a bit of uh, motion capture for video games. And I started uh -huh. the first couple of my, my, my years of performing um, doing motion capture, you know, I was I was playing superheroes and soccer players and football. You know, we would get tackled all over. The, you know, it's just anything and everything that they, they that they need that involves action, and that was a, a, a great place to cut my teeth. So, so you know? was that really? I mean, you know, I was I was talking. I've, I've talked on the Hollywood Experience to a lot of different stunt professionals, actors, etc., from different parts. And in England, for instance, there's a rigid. Um, curriculum you have to go through to actually become a stuntman you know you have to learn underwater stuff you have to learn dives you have to learn jumps you have to learn and you and you go through to a couple of years of doing things of that nature was there anything like that in your in your background uh you know f fighting in martial arts that was that was the main thing uh that that i was known for but you know back in uh you know the early 2000s when i started there wasn't as much work as there is now. So you do need to di diversify, you know, so I learned how to, you know, slide a car. Uh, I learned, uh, you know, how to ride a motorcycle, you know, um, uh, wire work was also a big one as well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, learning how to ride catapults, air rams, you know, it, you, you try to diversify so you're, you're as hireable as possible uh, in different, different situations. Right. Um, uh, but martial arts and fighting that was, oh, you know, and, and being, being Asian, if you're an Asian guy in the stunt world and you don't know martial arts or, or you're not <laughs> yeah, at, a, at a certain level, then there you're going to, you're going to get laughed at. You're, you're, you're basically useless. <laughs> if you don't know Kung Fu. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, when you, when you take into consideration, you know, I, I, I've studied uh, with um, a Shaolin uh, warrior monk uh, here in Los Angeles, who happens to be the first occidental who was inducted into the Shaolin temple. And when you're looking at the um, the amount of people that train outside the, the Shaolin Temple in schools, there are 10,000 people in one school training outside the temple in the mornings, or 5,000 in this group and 8,000 in that group. And you're like, it's part of the culture. It's not, you know, so, you know, there are, the amount of competition, I guess, that you have as an Asian American is, is totally different than a Caucasian, I guess. And, and that, that, being, that being said, you know, uh, we've got a very, very close, tight-knit community here in Vancouver. You know, when I first started, there was about 30, 35 of us uh, in, in terms of Asian, uh, Asian performers, Asian male performers. Mm -hmm. So we all knew each other and we all got along. We all trained together. Uh, so that was, that was, that was a, a great uh, environment to kind of grow up in this, in, in this, in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a lot more now. There's more work. There's 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 a lot of young people that are coming up. A lot a lot of great talent. You know, with you, the advent of YouTube, you know, the skill level is just it's it's rocketed, skyrocketing. Isn't it? Skyrocketing. It's 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 amazing to see. Um, way more than my own capability. I, I'm I'm getting a little bit older. I don't I don't move as much as as well as I used to, but. Uh, I still like to get my LinkedIn. For sure. It's okay. I, 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 I kind of finished mine when you were starting. So let's, let's talk, leave that out of there. You know, I was in, I was in you know, I, what, from where I was in the 90s, um, you know, you started in the 2000s. I'm in the 90s, you know, it was just the advent that we were talking about was the Hollywood um, look into the Hong Kong action uh, movies. And so people are like, what is this? You know, so 
the the fact was of seeing actors actually put do action of actually you know be able to portray that was a new thing in in the 90s because prior to that the 80s the 70s the 60s you'd have a couple of stunt guys where they go into close action where you just be moving around a lot so that you know you you could cut to close and you wouldn't actually see that the the stuff was going it and they would cut to a couple of stunt guys doing the the actual sword work or the the real fight Mm -hmm. but after Mm -hmm. that audiences were like no i want to see the actors doing it now so that's why you know you guys are doing all this you know the training of actors now much more so i think than ever before um because i think you that people want to see the actors doing it they don't want to you know just necessarily automatically cut to the the stunt performers uh taking over 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know the, one of the big things nowadays is, is um, you know, with, with, our, with our space here, we have, we have a stunt reversal space. We shoot a lot of pre-visits. And, and, um, oh, you do? What they, like to, what they like to see nowadays, is the last 10, I would say 10, 15 years, is how would you shoot a scene? You read a, a scene on a script and, and, you know, you've got somebody who's really good on the camera. And, and that's something that I, that, I, that I do as well. In being being adaptable you have to learn how to shoot action you have to know right. you know which side which angles how not to skip sometimes when to skip the line if you need to uh jump sorry jump the line um but yeah learning how to shoot previs how to make make things look good and also um, um editing in a way to, to to have sound effects you know you have you can color correct you know you can take it to the nines if you have the time and the equipment and the ability um but that's just another side that we have to offer these days um as as stunt professionals you know you have to learn how to shoot action how what 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 looks good you know you know we um when i was working with a stunt um oh, sorry, a sword master called bob anderson <laughs> bob was the premier one of the top top uh, sword masters in the business um he was the olympic fencing coach for the british team for 30 years he was i mean he did everything star wars game of thrones you know <laughs> lord of the rings he did all of them <laughs> and um he did a pre We I remember, and this is back way in there, but we were like a little camera. I said, we'll just show the, the director kind of what we're going to do, you know, type of thing. But back in that time, it, the transition of the director saying, I'd like to see this to, I need you to do this for me so I can really shoot this correctly. Hadn't trans, it hadn't happened yet. You know, so yeah. the directors are coming like, well, that's my deal. You know, that's, that, you know, this is, but I think it's changed now that they want to see somebody that knows what they're doing to see where the action is going to take, uh, where it's going to show the b- best from. Well, and you also have to kind of gauge the situation, the, the production, you know, the, the camera, uh, the, the, DO, the DOP, you have to see where they're coming from as well. Because if you show, if you present this beautiful looking product, you're also <laughs> kind of, you know, you're in their territory. Touching, your, touching toes, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, um, I'm going to think, of, I'm going to do this my way. So I was like, oh, okay, well, this was, this was just an example of what, what, uh, what, what could be done, right? So, so you have to be diplomatic in these situations too. And, and you know, being, being, being the stunt department, you do need to glue a lot of different departments together. You know, we're, we're, we're not here to say, oh, this is, this is, this is the way that's going to be done. No, you have to kind of 